We are rolling. I think. Yes, I hit the right button. So, any questions? Anyone about to come up with a question? that it means that you understand everything. Is that a valid assumption? Could you go over the free fall um, again about how gravitational, how you can find the acceleration through the mass uh, by knowing the mass of the object and knowing the gravitational pull of ah. where you are? Go over that again. All right, so finding acceleration due to gravity? Yes. That, I mean, there's just a. It stems from Newton's second law that F equals. The total force equals mass times acceleration. Okay. Uh, what, what if it tells you a force, like that you have? What if it tells you you have a force that when the object is going down, it gives you a force? Uh, it, it depends on the wording. Um, The, the force that it gives, uh, gravitational pull? Yeah, yes. Okay, that is the weight. Okay. So, if I have an object in free fall, ignoring air resistance, even though I have air lines right there, if I tell you the weight of it, or the gravitational force acting on it, or the gravitational pull acting on it, all of those are synonymous. So let's say it's 50 newtons. And I tell you that the mass is, okay, how many kilograms? This is the only force acting on it, so that's gotta be equal to the mass times the acceleration. If the only force acting on it is the force from the gravitational pull, the gr gravitational force, then it's, as long as you're close enough to the surface of the planet, it's called the weight. And that's equal to the mass times acceleration due to gravity. So this is the generalized case. This is specifically if the only force is the weight and it's in free fall, then the acceleration is the acceleration due to gravity, okay. which is roughly 9.8 meters per second squared here on Earth. So that will be the acceleration for the object going down? Yes. Okay. In this particular example, this would not be on Earth because I got other values here. So if that's 50 newtons is equal to three kilograms, times g, the math problem is 50 is equal to 3g, solve for g, divide by three. Some mysterious planet. So if you're drawing um, one of those force diagrams and you have the object and then you're drawing the things that are affecting it, right? how would you show the difference between something that's moving at a constant velocity versus something that is accelerating in that direction? In, all right, so in terms of the force diagram, you, you can. Okay. Um, Sorry, not the way that we've been doing it. If you really wanted to get into it, the way that you would represent the force by, or the magnitude of the force by the length of the line. So, if I'm drawing it to scale, I got a box here, if I have a force like that, this is a longer line, so this would represent a larger force than that, so this would be accelerating because the total force can't be zero. I cannot add those two together to get zero. If I am just doing a force diagram and not worrying about the length of the lines, then it's, you can't really tell. There'd have to be some, something else to let you know. Does that answer your question?
And so that is it accelerating. How do I show that it's not accelerating but has a constant velocity? All right. Because if your resistance force is the same as your pushing force, then does that not mean that it's not moving? No, that just means it's not accelerating. So this situation right here is, it is, I have two forces acting on it. So probably call it force one and force two. Um, assuming that those lines are at the same length, just opposite directions, uh, this would not be accelerating. It doesn't tell you if it's moving or not. All it does is tell you that it's accelerating. It's not accelerating. Now, there are certain situations where it's implied. So for example, I have some normal force here, and then I have, so here's a situation, I have two forces acting on it. I have a normal force, and I have a static friction force. If they're the same length, then it's not accelerating. The fact that it's static right there, the little s there is, would indicate that it's not moving relative to the surface it's touching. If I put, instead of an S there, I put F sub K, that implies, if those are the same length, just opposite directions, that would imply it's not accelerating, and the K there stands for kinetic, that implies that it is sliding. But we haven't, in the force diagram problems we've done, we're not distinguishing between the static and the kinetic frictions, so really there's no way to tell. But if you think about that, it makes some sense because the velocity of an object depends on the observer. Right now, you're at rest of me. Right now, you're moving towards me. Now, you may argue I'm coming towards you. Now, you're going away from me. There is no preferred reference frame that we are both equally valid in our comments. So, you're not moving is all dependent upon point of view. Did that answer? I think so. Jonathan, was your question answered? Yeah. Okay. Other questions? Or reframed questions, since you're not 100% sure I've answered it? I'll say. So in the, the question about weight equals mass and gravity, would gravity be the substitute for acceleration if you're using that one instead? Okay. All right, so when you say gravity, again, gravity is a huge topic. You're talking about the acceleration due to gravity? Yeah. All right. I, let me see if I've interpreted you correctly. If I was talking about an object falling near the surface of the Earth, would I put in 9.8 for G? Is that what you're asking? Mm -hmm. Yes, I would. Unless, uh, if this were a generic problem, an object falls near the surface of the Earth. I would, at that point, or near the surface of the Earth, I know the acceleration is roughly 9.8 meters per second squared. So I would put that in for a little g here. Okay. And again, emphasizing, this is acceleration due to gravity. You might have seen the signs in the lab room that says G is not gravity. That's the reason. It's the acceleration due to gravity or the or gravitational acceleration. Just like that's not gravity either. That's the force due to gravity. And then later on we'll get to the gravitational const constant. Other questions? Or they'll say, did I answer your question? Okay. Other questions? You have a question you wanted to ask right now because of that? No. Okay. Good. 
Just remind me at the break. box here. Let's make this 10 newtons and uh, 4 newtons. What's the acceleration? You want to split your direction there. Was it your direction that way? Pardon? Was it your direction that way? Alright, so that's the direction of it. And 10 newtons pushes in positive direction and four in negative direction, right? If you want. Okay. You want you want that to be the case? Oh no, I'm just asking. <laughs> why do I why can I not give her a straight answer besides just being me? She said ten newtons in the positive direction, the four newtons in the negative direction. What's why would I not give her a straight answer? Or why did I say if that's what you want? Exactly. So if we want to the right to be positive, then yes, that's in the positive direction, and that's in the negative direction. So if it was positive direction, then acceleration is two. All right, we'll see if we can get a little bit more out of that one. All right, so first off, let's establish what the convention is. So apparently, you were hinting at that. So what is, so I'm plugging in F equals MA. What is the total force? Four. Yeah. It's total force, so I have 10 plus negative 4, or 10 minus 4, or 6, as the kids say today, is equal to the mass, that's newtons, is in kilograms, times acceleration, and then solve. I believe that is what you said. Why would I deduct points if you answered it this way? No units. What should they be? No meters times x squared. All right, that's one of them. What else? What other set of units could you use? Where the answer is still two. How do we get two anyway? Six over three. Yeah, six what? Newtons. Six newtons over three kilograms. Newtons. So newtons over kilograms. Yeah. So two newtons per kilogram is also legitimate. Meters per second squared is, uh, is more traditional, but newtons per kilogram is a legitimate unit here. What the heck? Let's make it more complicated. Tail method. All right, tail method. Our two forces we're going to add together. We added the forces over there. We did it more uh, analytically there, but we also could have added these forces as I have 10 newtons that way. I'm now here. I go 4 newtons back. And so my result is from where I begin to where I end.
So that's my resultant right there. Okay, from where I begin to where I end. Now I noticed that on master set two, there are a number of people who didn't put the direction in the resultant. So we're doing the same thing here, it's just, it's just not as easy to add together. So I got six newtons going to the right, I have eight newtons going down. So my resultant, from where I begin to where I end, that is a right angle, and Pythagorean theorem, and what is the magnitude of my resultant? Well, 10 newtons. Uh, for those who, who missed it, that Pythagorean theorem, 6 squared plus 8 squared is equal to r squared. So 36 plus 64, 100. r is 10 newtons. Okay, now what? Acceleration is equal to 10 divided to 3. Say it again. To find acceleration, you need to 10 divide to 3. Divide by 3. By 3. By three. Why? Uh, total force to mass. Yeah. Acceleration is force over mass. So it is 10 newtons over 3 kilograms. And I, there are a couple ways you can express the answer. If you're a fan, a fan of decimals, 3.3, meters per second squared, or three and a third if you like the mixed numbers, or if you like the improper fractions. Or if you just like rounding off. On a test or quiz, I would see that, and I would go, oh, yeah, they know what they're talking about. And also, you could do newtons per kilogram as well, and put units. Questions to you, before I make it more complicated. Same problem. What is vector acceleration? At 10 thirds meters per second squared, it's the magnitude. That's the scalar acceleration. There's no direction in that answer. But now I'm asking for a direction. How do you do it? Velocity over time. Pardon? <clears throat> velocity over time? Oh, no, uh, it would be change in velocity over time, but I haven't given you any information about how fast it's moving. So that would not be the simplest way. Isn't it the same direction as arrow shows? Uh, sure. Talk about finding the direction like, of. Like, I mean, isn't it just acceleration would be in the direction that resultant shows? Okay. So that's how to express it. Exactly. Yeah, you are absolutely right. The acceleration will be in the same direction as that 10 Newton force. First day we actually did something similar to this.
All right, if it's a one-dimensional problem, we get away with just positive, negative, and we've done that on a number of things. This is a two-dimensional problem, so we have to somehow indicate direction with that. Again, I'm plugging into F equals MA. I have these two forces that are perpendicular to each other, which makes life a little bit simpler there. I make up my unit vector. I'm going to say something that will contrast here. I'm just going to I'm going to say to the right is I hat. I could write to the right, but I'd rather just do that. And then what do we make up J hat? This is just so I don't have to write out words. So my force is 6 newtons I hat. Minus, because my force is going down and I said up was positive, minus 8 newtons J hat is equal to 3 kilograms times acceleration. Now how do I solve for A? Divide that by three kilograms. Divide this over here by three kilograms. So on the right hand side, I have just A. So if I can figure this out, then I've got my answer. Well, I'm dividing both of these by three kilograms. So six divided by three is two meters per second squared, I hat. Minus eight divided by three. Done. We don't have to really go any farther than that. That's rectangular form. Now, alternatively, and the, the next part would require trig, which is beyond the scope of this course, so this is just a 30 second aside. We also could have expressed it in polar form, where you give the 